Hi, I'm Sharon Dawn and I have stage four breast cancer that's metastasized into my bones. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, so I wanted to do some videos um, to try and share the realness of what's going on in my life um, because so many of you are going through it too. If it's not cancer, it's something else. Um, it seems to be um, whether it's my age group now or whatever, but there's a lot of us not well and um, and a lot of us facing cancer. And um, I thought it'd be good to A, document what's going on um, and also just to share how I feel about things and where things are at and also what I'm doing to um, beat my cancer and... Um, you know, just life in general, what it's like going through it all. So um, I hope that's going to be of interest to some people. If not, it'll just be a diary for me. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I've got um, a stage four breast cancer that's metastasized through my bones, um, which means that I have holes through all my bones, uh, in, from my fore, uh, up in my head, uh, my chest, all my ribs, um, my pelvic, um, I've got ribs missing and um, it's all been eaten out. I've also got lesions on my lungs. Um, <clears throat> so my story started um, 4th of June 2021, so less than two years ago. And um, that started with me finding a lump in my boob. And I did a whole lot of recordings through that time called Finding a Lump. And um, so if you're interested about that first stage, go back and have a look. Um, but anyway, in, in a nutshell, I got a lump. Um, about 20 days later, I had an MRI. It showed it was already up to over two centimetres in size. It was very aggressive, HER2 positive, uh, triple positive cancer. So they decided um, to do a mastectomy. They also did another biopsy. They decided to take lymph nodes. They end up taking nine lymph nodes and my left left breast. So yeah, so um, the mastectomy was three months after I found it. So on the on the sixth of September. During that time, I had no pain. Um, I wasn't sick. Got nothing. So it, it was the bizarrest experience going through when you've got well, not, I'm reasonably fit, I'm active, and so forth, and. Yet here I have this lump that's growing that, oh my God, it's cancer. So um, so anyway, roll on um, 12 months till June last year. I was doing well. I'd changed all my eating, my lifestyle. So I was basically eating um, plant-based diet, giving up meats, um, dairy, pretty well everything. Um, <laughs> Especially for the first six months. Then after the first six months, I um, I moved. I was in a different, another area and I got a naturopath who specialised in cancer. And she wanted me to eat a little bit of, uh, raw, uh, little bit of meat, uh, grass-fed meat and a few other things for different vitamins. Um, I did a lot of supplements and all sorts of stuff over that 12-month period. Then in June, I was just... Going, walking back from the shops one day and I, I felt like I'd pulled my leg and funny little tweak you know and you think oh that's ridiculous I'll walk that out and it just didn't walk out and it got worse and worse over the next few days and um, then over the, the following week or so it got to the point I could hardly I couldn't put any weight on my one leg and then it sort of moved and I started having pains in my in my rib cage and it was all a bit weird and I thought I've just I, th I thought I'd pulled a muscle or done something in my back. Anyway, um, we came down to Victoria to see my in-laws, uh, my husband and I, and and when I got here, I thought I'll go to an osteopath and get my back sorted out. And um, <clears throat> I went to the osteopath and he told me to go to hospital. So I went to hospital. They did a whole lot of their wonderful tests. And um, anyway, the... A CT scan and that showed that I had um, this cancer all through my bones. So then they decided that 
if I did nothing, I'd have basically six to 12 months to live, but I could do radiation and chemotherapy, something I was, I did not do previously. I've never wanted to do it. Um, I, I spent a lot of time making that decision the first time around. Um, but I felt that this time I really didn't have a choice. I was in so much pain and uh, six months, hey, well, <laughs> what did I have to lose by that time? So um, anyway, so I first went to the radiation and they were surprised I walked in. They'd only seen my PET scan and an MRI of my back and expected me to be in a wheelchair because um, the vertebrae are just missing. So anyway, still walking. Um, so I got radiation in one spot on my back. The plus side for that is it took away a lot of pain. Um, and we, I assume um, it has killed the cancer in that spot. Uh, it's very targeted. The negative side of it was I got, I feel burnt in my back, sort of at this point in my back um, on both sides. My skin's not burnt, but I feel burnt if you touch me or whatever. It's, it's, it's The nerve ends are really sensitive. It also burnt my poor little nipple on my boob that I did have. Poor little booby. Um, so... That um, was quite painful for quite a few months. Um, it's, it's left scar tissue on my lungs, which of course makes it, you know, a, a higher risk for my breathing and so forth. Yay, yay. Um, so anyway, so I had the radiation, five days straight of that, blast, blast, blast. And then a week off and then I started chemo with Herceptin because I'm um, HER2 positive. So um, the Herceptin is supposed to, to counteract the HER2 and the chemo, of course, is to kill everything. So chemo kills every fast growing cell in your body. So that's why you lose your hair. Um, it's coming back. Um, it's why you lose your hair, your eyebrows and so forth. But the, the other things that you don't realize that you might lose is your fingernails. Mine have been wobbling on my fingers now for a couple of months and I, I keep taping them down like this one's taped down at the moment um, and my toes. Um, I don't want to lose my nails. It just seems so gross. And ugh. <laughs> anyway, so I try to hold on to them. Um, but that was from, from the chemo. So the chemo also gives you all sorts of wonderful side effects. Um, the burning, however it comes out of you, it burns. Um, even you get crusty eyes. <laughs> Everything's crusty. Um, yeah, so that's not a fun thing. Another one of the chemo, the, the two that really frustrate me the most is uh, the fatigue is just unbelievable. I've always been busy. I've always been busy. I haven't got energy to do anything. I'm lucky if I can do a couple of hours a day or anything. So I sleep a lot. Um, yeah, that's a real bummer. Um, and the other one is, I forget where I'm at. Like, not physically, but in, at what I'm talking about or thinking. And, you know, and everybody laughs and go, oh, yeah, that's when you get older and so forth. But when you lose it like that, it's like, um, oh, it's... It's terrible, and it'll be in mid-sentence, and I can't pull the thought back. You know, if you lose a thought, you can usually sort of pull it back in and get back to it. It just, it's gone. So um, that put me off doing these videos for a long time, and then I thought, well, what the hell, that's just part of it. So <laughs> if, if you lose me in mid-sentence, I'll tell you, but um, I've probably lost that thought then, so anyway, see how that goes. Um, Anyway, so chemo. Um, I did five rounds, so one every three weeks um, of the first style I had. And that was a blanketing chemo with the Herceptin. And then apparently there's a new drug out, a new chemo out, and um, it just finished its trials. And I got put forward as the first person here to have it. 
um, and it's a targeted chemo. So it's a, the chemo is attached to the Herceptin, supposed to take it straight to the cancer. And I've had now um, four of them. So I'd have to say the, the second one is better. Um, I'm more tired on it, I think. But other than that, the other side effects aren't as bad. Um, and I feel more nauseous. So it, it sounds bad, but it's not actually. It's, it, you, it's all part and parcel. You feel nauseous a lot of the time. You know, you, you're tired a lot of the time. You just, your nose drips, you know. <laughs> You've got no hairs in your nose. So it just, it just randomly drips. I mean, weird stuff that you just... It's the new you, you know. It's it's the new life that you that you've just got to accept where you're at at the moment. So um, yeah, that's that's a bit of fun. Um, so yeah, so currently I'm on the I've had four of the second chemo, and due next week, and I've also got um, expecting results from. Um, CT scan and bone scan next week so we can compare dots so I had one I had them done three months ago after my first five lots of chemo and I wasn't a lot better I was a little bit better um, in the pictures um, I could feel better that the, the pain's a lot less I'm on half the painkillers that I were um, three months ago so that's really good um, so the chemo is definitely doing something there, but um, okay, lost that thought. Chemo was anyway. We'll come back to that. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Um, so where else am I at? Um, oh, that's throwing me. I was hoping I'd get a bit further along before I lost that thought. All right. Um, so but basically I just wanted to share with you today of, of where I'm at um, and then over a few videos I'd like to talk about, um, you know, what supplements I'm doing, um, what my diet's like, because um, I, I have a, a diet that I've worked out, obviously, to, to try and beat the cancer. Um, and so I'd like to talk about things like that and also um, how I stay happy. Uh, I think that's really, really important. I'm, I am happy. Um, I might have cancer and they might tell me I'm dying of it. Um, but, you know, I don't have to accept that. Um, I may die. I could be wrong. Okay, I'll die. But um, either way, I'm going to die. Um, I hope I'll get as long as I can and I'll do whatever I can to get as long as I can. But I feel that being as positive as I can, um, being happy, it's not about being positive. Yes, you will always want to be positive. Negative thoughts pull you down. But um, it's just about being happy within yourself. Uh, and, and I think that comes with accepting that this is where I'm at. It, that doesn't mean to say I'd, I, wouldn't, I don't get angry or frustrated or upset sometimes. I do have um, what I call my two-minute pity party every now and again. Um, and that's it, two minutes, like, okay, I feel, yeah, well, if I want to have a ball, I'll have a ball, but, um, you know, if, if I'm feeling down, I'll let myself feel down for a little bit, and then I'll go, right, come on, let's move on, because what's the point of being alive and fighting to be alive if I'm just going to feel down and sad or negative or angry or bitter, or what's the point, like, you know, so if I've only got, say, six or 12 months left to live, I want it to be fun. I, wa I want it to be happy. I want to do as much good stuff as I can. You know, I, I don't want to be a victim. I don't want to be in a pity party. So, you know, I just remind myself of that. And I go to my go-to things, um, and I'll talk about that in the video, um, it, how, I, how I keep myself happy. And how I easily remind myself of the things that put a smile on my face and make me happy. So um, anyway, that's an intro. Um, I'm going to call this Living With Cancer because um, I'm not planning to die. I'm planning to live. Um, and um, just what it's like just going through it. So um, I'll catch you next round. <laughs>